Hey everyone, Rodev here, and today we're going to be continuing the Obby series, so let's get right into it. So the first thing we're going to be doing is scripting the Invite Friends button, which will open up a little Roblox Made UI that has uh, your friends list on it and an Invite button. This helps with player counts, so we're going to be doing it. And uh, then the next thing we're going to be doing is uh, something I forgot to do in the last video, which is scale all the UI. So you can head to the, to the uh, description of this video, and you'll see a plugin called Auto Scale Lite, which is right here. And what you want to do is download Autoscale Lite, restart Studio after you've installed it, and from there, uh, you can go ahead and press this button. It'll open up a little unit conversion window. I'm just going to place my window right here. Uh, and what we can do with unit conversion is highlight everything, so go to the top, make sure everything's open. Shift and click at the bottom here, make sure everything's highlighted. Click scale on the position and scale on the size. And then what we can do is go to the top bar open everything up just like we did with the other one and copy everything scale and size and then what you want to do is go ahead and close all of this copy these three the uh, main ones go ahead and click this red button here and then click the uh, actual UI click the red button and after that we can go ahead and uh, close it all off alright guys so now that the UI is done the next thing we're going to be doing is scripting the invite friends button this button will get a lot more players into your game so it's essential to have so inside the invite friends button, which is under the left bar under starter GUI, you want to insert a local script. And we're going to name this script invite friends script. And inside this script, the first thing we're doing is getting the player. So local player equals game dot players dot local player. And this gives us our local player that uh, this script is for because it's a local script. Each player in the game has their own, uh, not version of the script, but copy of the script. Because what happens when the game starts is everything under starter UI is cloned into the player's own uh, UI folder. So as you can see, once I hop in, under uh, my player, we have the player GUI folder with all the UI left and top bar. The rest is all by Roblox. So now, th now that we know that, we uh, know why we're getting a local player here. Alright, now we need social service, so we can type local. Uh, social social service equals game colon get service social service not that uh, social service just like that and now what we can do is get our button so local button equals script dot parent and I'm just gonna do some formatting here just so it looks a bit nicer and from there what, what we can do is create our function for on button pressed and we're also going to be adding mobile compatibility. Okay, the next thing we're going to be scripting is the function for when the button is pressed. So for this, we can type local function on button press and two brackets. Press enter a few times, you'll get an end. And now we're going to be using a P call. So local success comma result equals P call function. Make sure all the brackets look the same. We have two here, and then another one here, and make sure you have the one right here. From there, what we can type is return social service uh, colon can get can send game in by async. So this, uh, what we're doing here is using a p call a p call rather, and what this does is it allows us to not have the script error if there is an error, uh, and we're just returning a true or false whether the player can use social service or not. So now what we're going to be doing is uh, if result equals true, not equals, but we're checking, so equals equals true, then here what we need to do is social service, colon, prompt game invite, and then to our uh, local player, just like that. The next thing we need to do is add the mobile compatibility, so button.touchtap, colon, connect, and right here we just need to type, we just need to type on button press. Get rid of those extra brackets, make sure it looks like this. And then for PC, just button dot mouse, button one click, colon connect, on button press, just like this, super simple. So from there, the next thing we're gonna be doing is going ahead and scripting the uh, stage uh, right here, the stage display. So now that the invite friends button is done, we can go back to the left bar, close that off, and go to stage display, hit plus, and insert a local script. In this local script, the first thing we're doing is we're going to be naming it, and I'm going to call it a stage display script. 
And in here, what we can do is first of all get the player. So local player equals game dot players dot local player. From here, what we can do is go ahead and get the uh, text label. So local text label equals script dot parent. And then from there, we can get the player's leader stats. So I'm actually going to do that here. Local leader stats equals player colon wait for child leader stats. And under here, we can get the stage, the stage value. So for that, I'm just going to go back to service script service, service script service rather. And in the leader stat script, I'm just going to double check what the name is right here. So it's for me, it's stage. So I'm going to be using stage. So local stage equals uh, this part doesn't matter. This is just this script's variable. But here's where it does matter. Leader stats colon wait for child. And in here we can just type stage, just like that. And then from there, we can start changing the text level when the stage value is updated. So stage uh, colon get property changed async. And we just need to get the value property. Once you've typed this, go ahead and type colon, connect, and then we're just gonna connect a function just like this with two brackets. Press enter a few times. You'll get an end right here and make sure all the brackets look the same. So from here, what we can do is text label dot text equals speech marks stage. And then in here, we just need to type um, uh, whatever you wanna type. So for me, I'm just gonna do stage space and then right here, dot dot stage dot value so what this does is it allows us to see the player's stage and then update the text accordingly and that only updates when the property of the value is changed so from there we can go ahead and close off that script close off the leader shot script if you did have it open and go ahead and add go ahead and close off all of this from there we do need to script the top bar so actually go to the top bar and uh, these two buttons we're not going to be inserting scripts inside them but inside the main ui itself we're going to be inserting a local script and calling it teleport handler. So first thing we need to do is get our player. So local players equals game get service players. Local player equals game or not game but players dot local player. And then from there we can get both buttons. So local I'm just going to call it uh, actually yeah back backward uh, button backward button uh, I think we can just call it backward equals script dot parent dot backward stage and local forward equals script dot parent dot forward stage and then from there uh, we also need the current stage display so local stage display equals script dot parent dot current stage display. So now if we go to leader shot script real quick, we'll see that we have the current stage value, but it's parented to the player. So uh, what, we, what we're going to be doing is getting that value. So local uh, current stage equals player colon wait for child current, let's actually get the name right here, current stage and paste it in here. So player wait for child current stage. And what this, is, what this allows us to do is set the player's uh, stage display right here whenever they go to a new stage. So what we're going to be doing is creating a little... Uh, actually, we can just go back to the uh, left bar, stage display, stage display script, and copy this real quick. So let's go ahead and copy uh, all of this right here. Close off that script. Paste it in here. And a few things we need to change. Right here, we need to make it current stage. And over here, we just need to make it... Uh, stage display and we also need to change this to current stage the next thing we're going to be doing is creating a few remote events so go to replicated storage insert a folder and name this folder events and inside this folder we can insert all of our events so first a remote event and this event can be called forward stage so uh, now that we have the forward stage remote event created we can go ahead and uh, script it from the client side. So first we need the event. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and uh, get the uh, replicate storage events folder here. So local rs equals game colon get service replicated storage. Local events equals rs dot 
events or you can make whatever uh, you name the folder here and then we can get our forward stage event so local forward event equals events dot forward stage and then from there we can go ahead and start uh, scripting that so from here what we can do is forward dot mouse button one click actually I'm gonna be using a function instead because we also have to uh, um, I think about the mobile players and if they click the button so for that we can just go ahead and create a function local function forward button just like this and what we can do is go ahead and start uh, scripting the forward button function that we've just created so I think the only thing we need to do for the forward bu button function is check if the player's current stage is equal to the uh, uh, actual stage they're on, if that makes sense. So for that, we can go ahead and add, uh, just go here, local stage equals player colon weight for child leader stats. And in here we can just type find first child stage. So from here, what we can do is go ahead and make that check. So current stage. So if current stage dot value is um, so what we need to do is make sure it's uh, equal to or if it's uh, less than. So for that, what we do is equal and a less than sign, or a less than an equal sign rather. And right here, we just type stage dot value, just like this. And then from there. What we can do is go ahead and fire the uh, fire the event. So forward event colon fire server just like that. And what this will do is if our uh, if the player can teleport forward, uh, if they've unlocked those stages ahead of them, we can teleport them forward. If not, then it won't do anything. So now what we need to do is go ahead and connect the event to the uh, button. So forward dot touch tap colon connect forward button just like this and then uh, forward dot mouse button one click colon connect forward button and now it's pretty much the same thing with the backwards button we just need to make sure that the uh, count does not go backwards in the uh, numbers below zero so let's go ahead and do that. Uh, one thing I forgot is right here we just need to update update the uh, stage display. So stage display dot value. Actually, I think we uh, I think the code will update with our remote event, meaning this will update down here. So it's a pretty cool system, and we won't have to script anything here. So now, same thing with the backwards event. Uh, we can go ahead and copy all of this code right here and change everything to backwards. Backward button. Right here, it's gonna be the backward event. So just head over to the events folder, create a remote event, and call it the backward event or uh, backward stage. And then once you've created the backward stage event, you can go ahead and create a variable for it up here local backward uh, event equals events dot backward stage and then down here so after all of the forward code just go ahead and type uh, just make it a bit uh, easier for ourselves dash dash forward code and right here again forward code and under that backward code just like this and then from there, go ahead and make sure everything says backwards. So backward event. Uh, also the backward button. We just need to uh, change this actually. So uh, backward button, make sure the function's in there. Backward button. And then also make sure this says backward. After that, uh, I'm just gonna quickly check something up. It's all good. So from there, now we can just script the backward button. So from here, what we can do is make sure that uh, it's not uh, less than zero. So just if it's greater than or equal to zero, then we can allow it. 
and just need to make sure all of the uh, checkpoints are a bit bigger just to make sure the players actually do touch them when they get to their stages so from there what we can do is go ahead and uh, make sure this is backward event colon fire server and everything will work accordingly after that hey everyone rotev here and real quick i made a few errors so let's go ahead and fix them and start a ui go ahead and click left bar and under the invite friends button the script is complete it's not garbage but it's just not working so i'll have a fix ready for you guys in the next video but that's not the main mistake we go to stage display stage display script right here make sure it says a uh, get property change signal my uh very dumb self wrote async make sure it says signal uh, and then the top bar go to teleport handler all the way down right here make sure it says signal make sure it does not say async where signal is and other than that, that, sh that should all be good. I also said I'm about to make all the checkpoints bigger, so make sure uh, you actually go, and go ahead and do that. Uh, make sure that, you know, that a player will 100% touch them when they go to a stage. Because it has to be like that. Because, um, yeah, I just keep saying because. Uh, basically, uh, if the players don't touch the checkpoints, then their progress won't be saved, obviously. And we do need to make sure that, checkpoints, that the checkpoints are touched. So go ahead and do it like this. Uh, for this checkpoint, I'm just gonna raise it up a bit. You, you guys can actually do this with the checkpoint as long as can collide is off. So just to make sure that players do touch them. And then up here, just don't go overboard with it. Or else it won't look uh, natural when the player touches the platform. And I think that's, okay, well, one more. I'm just gonna walk you guys through this. Through this. Uh, so that's all my checkpoints done. So make sure everything's like that and make sure you change all those get property changed asyncs to signals. But other than that, that's what I have. Uh, actually, an intro is coming up, so I'm not going to, uh, or an outro rather is coming up. I'm not going to outro right now. But anyways, back to the main video. So that is all of our client-sided code. None of the teleporting will work yet, uh, as we have not scripted the, uh, scripted the server-sided code yet. That will be in the next video. But I think that's all for today, guys. Uh, anyways, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Go ahead and like the video. It's Rodev. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. I can see you wanna vibe with me. Just say you wanna vibe with me. Feeling like I want a lottery. You getting a lottery.